Okay, well, uh, welcome all of you to this uh, webinar. You were invited as a um, to uh, this key post and key accident passive safety solutions. So, on the first slide in PowerPoint here, that is the title that I put in, just to reassure you that you signed up for the right webinar. But in fact, what we're going to be looking at today is something that's a little bit more solutions based. And what's really nice, I think, is to be able to tell a story with our software. We have obviously a number of products, but it's tying them all together to express a business solution, if you like. So many of you will know me. I've uh, headed up the user groups, um, presented key sign and key lines over the years and key accidents. Um, and if you do wish to communicate with me, there's my email address there, will at keysoftsolutions.com. Always happy to uh, take uh, questions and calls on any subject. So, what do I mean by solutions? Why would we talk about a solutions based approach to the kind of work that uh, a, lot of you, a lot of you guys would be doing? Well, it is good to see that we have interoperability based around the number of our products that are added onto AutoCAD. So, the drawing file format does enable people to perhaps uh, take the, um, the design from uh, a lining standpoint through to the street lighting engineers, back to the signals engineers, and there is this improbability based around the file format. Solutions provide the end-to-end -end track management and road safety engineering side of things. But in terms of some of the products that are not focused on designs, so key accident, for example, in the design database program, we can extend AutoCAD in the same way that our design applications extend AutoCAD and actually bring element of GIS capability to that. As a company, many of you have known us over the years in various different guises, starting as key systems and then key traffic systems, and now key soft solutions with our key soft traffic and key soft landscape. So on the traffic side, we have got 15 major products and modules. That isn't really where we end, but uh, those are the main ones that we talk about. Just let's have a look in a little bit more detail. Uh, most of you will know them. We're going to be looking at uh, the four on the left there this morning, if I have time. But we also have the path analysis that we sell us for auto turn there, and for signals designers and street lighting designers signals and lights respectively there, and the highway power cabling module for doing all of these. So we also have a number of additional ones as well, for doing temporary traffic management design, for the road sign database side of things, pavement management, and then kiosk for handling your mapping within the AutoCAD environment. Two elements there really, the mapping for doing your design, but also Kiosk can bring mapping in in a way that makes AutoCAD feel like Google Maps, GIS. And then ParkCAD for doing your off street parking. And in tandem with AutoTurn, the swept path analysis, we're also resellers for Taurus and Nexter, which drive, if you use the, um, the roundabout and the junction design based on the swept path parameters that are entered, it restricts the design that, you can be done, that, that uh, can be achieved. So it's much less trial and error that we might jump in the test to see if the vehicles that you expect to go through the junction can get through it. And maybe if that's not the case, you go back and try and do a redesign. That's the end of the PowerPoint, just to give those who are less familiar with us a little bit of an introduction to the company and the kind of offering that we have. Um, and what I want you to do then is turn your attention to the database application, which enables the searching side of things, but in terms of actually a solution, it may often be a good starting point to examine the data that you have. That might not be site-based initially. So I talked about extending AutoCAD and giving it some GIS capability, um, and, and there is an element of key accident that is the add-on to AutoCAD. But some of the studies that you might do would actually just involve a general look at the software, not site-based at all. So no context at this 
So one of the things that we provide within the database application, and it is also provided as well, as you'll see, <clears throat> excuse me, on the AutoCAD side, is the ability to define a query and have one with complex. Now, for those of you who don't know Key Accident, this database application provides for a search of any of the fields that you say at the scene of injury accidents, whether that be vehicle fields, whether there was a particular maneuver involved, right turn accidents you might be looking for, or maybe you're looking at particular types of casualty, maybe looking at pedestrians or elderly cycle riders, that kind of study, very, very easy to build up, very complicated queries, or complex queries, I should say. Queries are built up in the bottom, specifies a particular date range there, I just clicked on to highlight that in blue, in fact, looking at around about um, five years worth of data, I think, there, <coughs> beginning of January 2006 to the end of December 2010. So within that date range, I've got three separate, oh, okay, I've got three separate to have a look at there. Now, I have just found that uh, Key Accident has uh, um, decided that it's not going to play ball for me just there for a moment. So I'm just going to bring that back up um, on the AutoCAD side. I'll go back to the query condition screen here, and I will load the search that I had before. But this is quite a, was actually part of the uh, uh, demonstration that I was just going to show you. We can see the queries and repeat them very, very easily later on. So the first of the three lines that I've got here, and these are linked with an OR condition, is to ask the person to bring back the accident where an object was hit in the carriageway. So that would be the kind of thing uh, would, that would be there. Okay, I do see issue with my database, and it's uh, not enabling me to select the query condition there. So let's just load that search back in. So um, I was hoping to see the uh, type of things there. So um, the hit object in carriageway. So you can see the kind of thing that we might have um, available to us. And what I've got there is um, a condition down at the bottom, hit object in seaway. So there is a query condition in list. That enables me to select a number of items from the list. You can see that I've got item nine, a central island of a roundabout, or number six in some funny order. So, five or seven, a bollard or a refuge, and eleven there, some other kind of object. And then the second condition here, <coughs> excuse me, tied together with the or, is for any accident to come back to me where an object was hit off the carriageway. And the items that will be relevant selecting there are the kind of things that you can do perhaps at a point of view. So, you've not been able to remove trees, for example, because there may be protected under the British standard. Um, trees like buildings can be listed. So uh, hit object in carriageway, in list I've got one, two, so road signs, signals, posts there, telegraph poles. Um, in fact, four was selected on this um, uh, query down the bottom here, because it may be that we can protect the tree with barrier, and it will have to be removed and replaced with some form of passively safe tree. And also, as this query, again, I get um, with an OR condition, which means that it's going to bring back accidents where the object in the carriageway, those values that I read out, or where a vehicle left the carriageway and hit an object of the kind of item that I picked previously, or where, where a vehicle left the carriageway um, in any case. I'll try and find that uh, on this list here. Okay, so these are in a funny sort of order. They're actually in the order of stats 19, um, so sometimes it's easier just to be able to sort these alphabetically. So between one and eight is just simply leaving the carriageway there. So I was excluding not the carriageway or unknown where there was no value recorded essentially, or it was unknown whether the vehicle left the carriageway. Of course, it's very unlike the so with this query, if I actually do the query here, and this was just a, a search that wasn't linked to any spatial filter, any location, you can see that uh, I have 
complete number of axes meet that criteria. So this is five years worth of data and it does show a um, uh, across the whole of the county area, um, 2,078 slight accidents, but a total of 2,871 accidents that meet those criteria. So that is quite a number and is area-wide study that um, one, one could uh, address. Um, but it also is likely to provide for a cluster site study. What I mean by that is that we might very well find that with significant numbers like that, even across a five-year period, that we might find specific sites where there's something going on that is a pattern that matches those certain criteria, vehicles leaving the carriageway or leaving the carriageway and hitting an object. So what I'm going to do actually is think here within the AutoCAD side of things, just uh, meant to load up the database there. So let's just close that down and uh, I go to my here. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is just close that and you can see in fact that uh, I should now have a load of accidents that are active. So down at the bottom there are very small numbers actually, but it tells me the records are active. So normally a lot of you who are familiar with Kiaxon would probably just be doing this kind of area-wide filter with a application. Having done the search now here, in fact, again, without a spatial filter, without any sort of polygon or area to find, I can actually now go and find cluster sites in this accident. I've got the uh, 2,800 accidents to use. The um, label there was slightly um, mislabeled. It was saying plot. Um, so it brings up the cluster side generator, and again, for those who are familiar with this part of the process, some of you, of course, may be engineers who would just come in and uh, um, have a site already identified by your uh, road safety colleagues, um, and this is the kind of process that they would be going. So for those who are familiar with the accident, you'll find um, that normally this screen has a lot of tick boxes on, um, things like elderly pedestrians, young cyclists, skidding accidents, that kind of thing. But here I just have a custom query. It's going to try and make some cluster sites, some collections where um, accidents center on a specific location uh, based on the 2,871 accidents that met criteria in the database. So on the next screen here, there's a number of steps in this wizard. I could actually sort the site based, <coughs> excuse me, on the, the date of the accident. So accidents seem to be naturally inclining in the sense that um, five years ago there was only a couple, but more recently there was 10 or so, then that would be a site that's more interesting than if it was a hand where there was a naturally declining pattern of accidents at the site across years. So date-based weighting would allow me to sort the site in a meaningful way based on the trend, if you like, across the year. And also severity might be something of interest there to make sure that the sites that come to the top show a higher severity of accidents. Now here I've got a number of sites that have come up for me and one of them that I'm going to focus on is actually the uh, M40 here. So it's this junction um, that I've uh, been trawling through the county and the site which gives us um, a nice interesting tale to tell. So this is the M40 junction, and I hadn't actually ticked any of the box to get the site sorted in any way. But if I go into the, the report, you can see once that comes up, that we can get some good detailed information about the sites here. Again, the one that comes to the top is not going to be the, the M40, but you can see that we get a, a nice report of each site. We have the center of the circle, within which the accidents are did, um, and also you can see the numbers across the year, so that would help us to understand if we had ranked the sites and sorted them based on dates or severity. We also show that there's a, a, a second report that's available here, I'll just go to the second page of that, the first is uh, blank, it allows me to put in the title and so on and so forth, and although those numbers are fairly small, you can see there's a little bit more detail each site there 
just the top site in, and uh, some of the information about the, the second site in my list, um, out of sight, two tables available to me there, the accident severity and casualty severity. So we could get a lot of detail about the site at this stage. But what it does warrant, once you've identified a specific site, is a nice bit of detailed analysis. So I'm going to put, I'm going to save this collection of cluster sites, and I'm going to call my collection vehicles leaving carriageway. I'll just spell that right. And, and as you can see, put optionally put a description in there. Now, the kind of thing you can do with the cluster site analysis is run it almost on a monthly basis because it will identify sites. Um, these golden sites, like where there are remedial measures and opportunity for a nice low cost remedial measure, they are becoming fewer and further between. But as road conditions change, maybe you have um, a few trees open up, um, maybe even uh, supermarkets closing down. Um, then it is worth doing the study again and again. So I'm just going to put in today's date, 10.15, just to show that that was a run that I did today. Sometimes I put a spelling mistake in these um, issues here so that you can see the right is the 27th of May. Okay. okay. So what I can then do now is go back to the cluster site manager, and this is the kind of thing I was attempting to do on the base of the selected the conditions there. On the cluster site manager, um, it will list me all of those collections that I have previously saved, and you can see at the bottom of the list here I've got a living carriageway with the date that I put in. Now actually I was practicing this yesterday. Um, it, if you can read the small there, of course, but on the 26th, yesterday I did uh, go through just on site. So what I do actually now is plot those out. It will just generate those clusters again in the background. And I've got a number of options here. I just want a standard plot, so I'm just pressing return to accept that there. So there are a number of uh, dots that have appeared. If I just zoom in on these two up here, just zoom in quickly because um, I'm just hoping your screens will refresh relatively quickly. Um, you can just about make out little magenta marks on your screen now. But if I zoom right in on them, you can see that they are circles and they are identifying sites with the numbers of accidents with each site. But what I want to focus on, in fact, is the site down here on the M40. And I think I'm just going to put in the zoom command and see the center having previously written out the coordinates for the location of this junction, it's worth me just zooming directly to that, maybe about 200 meters in view. So there is the uh, circle on the, um, uh, and what I might actually do here, just to give it a little bit more context, is go to Kiosk Mapper and just ask it to load me the load. Uh, the, the, uh, let's go to the zoom, I think that gives all of the roads there, yes, so we have the, uh, the B road there in orange, as well as the slip road off the motorway, and the A452 there going north off that junction of the M40. Okay, so it is a fascinating site, and I thought I'd bring up the imagery just to show you what that looks like. So I'm um, just zooming in on the, uh, the, the problem area there. We've got a circle there actually at the junction. <coughs> so let's have a, a look at that in terms of what. Um, Google can offer us a fantastic resource for um, Google Street View and uh, Google Earth or Google Maps just to get a good context for the site that you're dealing with. So here we have the uh, slip road uh, coming off the carriageway up to Junction 13. And of course, bear in mind that we have uh, identified this site by doing a search within the database application, um, within Key Accident, to locate accidents the cluster where vehicles left the carriageway. Already you can start to see that there is a noticeable um, problem that has um, that some engineer has tried to address. Bear in mind my data So this imagery was captured uh, around about September 2014 by Google. I'll just uh, credit the uh, acknowledge the um, the source of this of course. Um, so you can see we've got these uh, big yellow backing board Warning signs at 1500, the largest 
Exide shows in our regards. We've got traffic going both ways, and then we've got our direction sign coming up there, uh, just uh, um, pixelated out there, so we can't quite see the uh, the uh, directions on there. But we can the destinations, but we can of course see uh, what a very use of the map sign there that we are approaching the T junction just to try and stop vehicles from overrunning and slowing them down. So again, as we get a little bit closer, we can see we've got the uh, large 1500 giveaway signs, and again, the supplementary plates with the text at a very large height. Now, coming to, up to the junction, you can very quickly see now the approach that's been taken there, checkboard backing and the yellow backing to the direction signs. So again, really alerting people as they approach this uh, bend. I'll just go back a step. It's uh, some 250 yards, so people do have a very good um, warning time, but uh, of course the accidents are still happening, and so very much addressed by placing the big checkerboard king boards with the yellow backing board there again and all the direction signs on that. Now, the kind of thing that uh, would be appropriate here, of course, uh, should um, the continue to, should the problem continue, that even these measures have not uh, managed to um, stop the um, the injuries would be to place the signage on passively safe sports. Of course, that's what the way structure on the, the lattice based post supports on the right there. But it may be that there's still an opportunity to increase the safety with the two giveaway signs on the left hand side on the island there. And I just wanted to switch to the next image, which was taken in June of this year. And you can see, actually, this is looking along the main road from the uh, A4100. Um, we were previously, essentially, in the view of the vehicle that you can see there on the right. So this is now looking along. And those big checkerboard signs as of June this year have been replaced. And the giveaway structure, uh, the giveaway sign with the two posts and the 50 mile an hour sign, just pop back to see that, just to remind you it's that uh, um, giveaway sign on two posts there on the left. Um, after the removal of those big checkerboard signs, um, they have been knocked down. So the problem has been continuing. There's still a, a room for some remediation to be considered. So that's the kind of thing that I was going to do right now. And just to show you this solutions-based approach, just going to pop into a key sign. It's one of those areas that uh, people are not necessarily familiar with. That is a, a, a key to very straightforwardly. Um, in this particular case, uh, I will just quickly do a, a sign and supplementary plate, and we can maybe put on the uh, the warning sign. Um, we'll just flip through. You can see I'm actually just using the arrow on the keyboard. Whatever the warning sign might be, um, so your screen will be refreshing at reasonable speed here. Um, so we might find the uh, the giveaway there. We've about 100 yards. I'm just going to replace that with 100 yards. And we'll go with our 1200 high sign for that. Um, you can see, in fact, while the selection of the height there is 600 mil, it's definitely the appropriate X height for the supplementary plate is 62.5 down there on the right under the image. If I switch that to 120, based on the advice that is in Appendix B to, to four of the traffic signs manual, it suggests 150 is a more appropriate height there. So if I um, ask for it to have a yellow backing board, choice at the top there, and maybe put some background fill, I can draw that sign out very quickly. We get the sign at the appropriate height and the supplementary plate at the appropriate size. And we can also detail that very, very easily. I'll just call that N40, T-A. Um, and we can very quickly add some detail to that sign. I think you've got within key signs to be able to very quickly get the two signs at commensurate height because, of course, the dimensions of the warning sign are normally given in millimeters, but the design of the supplementary plate is normally done in X height. And it's just making sure that we get the right size for each of the. That sign I wanted to do was the one uh, on the, the island. We may just simply put that giveaway sign in. Um, pop it down on the drawing, but tell the system that we want it to be 1500. Uh, that's what it's the correct size for this. 
Um, and we're going to probably put this um, at uh, an X site. Well, well, we'll leave the X site there at 100 mil because in this particular case, there is actually no requirement to have to draw this in the um, key sign design at uh, a, an assumed X site of 100 mil. So just clicking back then to key sign, I'll just make sure I've got the selected there. Click OK, and we have that sign. Uh, looks a little bit larger, in fact, than the uh, um, sign here, but that's 150 mil X size, but that's, uh, it is slightly different size. Uh, for counterintuitive, the sizes that you get off these signs, but do bear in mind that I left this sign at 100 mil X size, assumed, uh, and then was left at 150 mil X size, so uh, that actually does add up correctly. Now, in this case, uh, I just want to put a supplementary plate on this, um, but we're just, sorry, a, a backing board. On this, so I'm just going to apply backing board to this it's a warning sign. We've got no supplementary plate, so I don't have to tick the box there on the right. And uh, in fact, I've got my X height slightly wrong here, so I'm just going to go back and um, it's remembered it from previously. I'm just going to set the X height there to 100 mil and OK that and go back to the backing board command there. And uh, you can see that X height now is correct. That Normally, this is disabled so that we um, we expect you to do this in a process um, so that everything is of the right size. So I'm just going to click OK, select my warning sign, and bring my structure into that. Um, so uh, OK, this scale is 150 mil, so we'll just uh, um, change this, change the height. So here we go. We've got our, our backing board. There's some complexities there with that particular combination of heights and the way that the backing board is designed in terms of um, percentages, I think it's something like 10% to the top and bottom of the sign. So here we are, we've got my 1845, my 16D width, 16 feet in fact there, um, let's make that X height 100, I've just uh, um, done the uh, cardinal sin uh, <laughs> another, on another day, or if anyone wants to ask a question there, I'm more happy to address that. Okay, so the idea really is that we've got something in key post that uh, maybe uh, is a structure that we've already got on site. Um, if those two posts had been down, I'm just trying to, to model that. But uh, what it's going to do, in fact, is uh, to um, just check whether I have got. Okay, so I have got this structure modeled here, and it may be I can place the, uh, the new line on that. So let's just open that. Uh, and check that the structure is okay with the new sign. So let's just send that in view. Now, it's obviously going to be a cost saving if I can reuse the existing structure. Um, so that's now modeled within the key post environment. And it may be that I've actually just selected some posts, I just pop some posts on there just to make sure that I've got exactly in key posts what I have on site. Um, and then place the sign, um, the two signs there to make sure that I'm moving uh, to what's on site. So, what I need to do then, of course, is to export that directly from Key Post. Uh, you see the image that I brought up Key Post with was one that was designed using all of the capabilities to create the sign in its full geometry with the uh, roundel at the top there. So, it's nice to be able to capture that geometry in detail and not approximate to a rectangle. Now, people will be using the foundation design side of the export import process, the data transfer for the data transfer process from between, I should say, key sign and key post. That round trip method is um, very, very useful. Um, but what I'm just going to do is use the export and export the sign uh, that we have in view. So I'm going to again to Jonathan 13 and uh, happy with that sign there and just export that. Captures a little image in the paper space layout and that's available on the key post side to import. So what I do want to do then is just to take that structure out here, um, delete the sign, just hitting the delete key on the keyboard so that I have my structure ready to test whether my new sign can come in. So here we have the import function. 
and browse through to the folder where that key post export will have gone under key sign and you can see my M40 Junction 13 file there. So I've got that sign now imported, a little message there quickly popped up and it will then just bring that into the database with its geometry and refresh the signs database there. And that sign so I could now use within the database ready to be used on another occasion should I have the same kind of design required anywhere. Now I can specify the substrate at this point, it won't make any difference to the structure as a whole, but it'd be sensible to say it's got to be a composite. If um, I was in a, uh, an area where the signs are, uh, go missing regularly, but in this particular case I'm just going to put sign on the drawing, have that written in view for me. Now one of the things you should be able to see on my screen here is the dotted line, which is a specification under the property for this proposal for the mounting height. And it has a really lower mounting height, and I'm not quite sure what that is. It's 1850, I can see from the dimension there. But it would be very easy to put that at a default mounting height of 2.1 meters and just pop that up there. Um, and if I just have a look at the design, you see that probably a more sensible mounting, although um, realistically, probably uh, that looks a little bit like the kind of mounting where you've got a real time on the that sign face itself there, uh, but not much different to if that was like based mast or some other kind of mast support, or indeed if it's on a single post. So um, that's pretty reasonable, I think, but what I do need to do is attach that to the structure. So a lot of the functionality you get within key post is on the um, uh, the use of the sign, and then there's lots of items there relevant to the selected object or sign in this case. So I can attach that to the support. And unfortunately, on the traffic light system on the red, that uh, is not going to work on that structure. Uh, now, that in itself will uh, cause me to ask for a new structure to be placed here. Um, it's always difficult to really make this assessment in terms of the destabilizing or the overturning of the structure itself, the bearing pressure of the geotechnics underneath um, the structure there. Um, unless we have a full geotechnic survey. So, um, so I would probably want to do more investigation on if everything else checks out okay, but in fact the support bending, we're uh, over 100%, the capacity, uh, it's, you, you can't, we can't have 130% in the support bending. There are classes from the harmonized European standards which uh, we would have to adhere to, and um, that would be something like 25 millimeters per meter, and obviously if we go to 30 or per 200% there. So what I might do then is say, okay, right, we can't do that, so let's actually delete the, um, the post here, we'll delete the post and then the other one, and we get the system to suggest us something different. So just whizzing through this, um, you can see um, as the screen refreshes that we've got various different types of masks available to us, different manufacturers. So select that and then ask the system to suggest something for me, then we can very quickly come up with some kind of choice that would work. In this case, the, um, the rectangular mark there um, is fine. Let's just have a little bit of a look at the top. Actually, that is a circular foundation. Um, because not all the installers can actually install the circular foundations. So can we just have a look at back at the, the front of that sign? Um, nicely, passably safe, that would obviously match the one that we have on the site. On the right hand side, probably should have been correct. Actually, with the two posts here, if I do go back to key post and say, yep, I, I, I want to try something else, I'm going to revert back to just the sign. In fact, what I'm going to do is open that same. So the problem with this, if I say no to save that in the changes that I've made, then we have got some issues with the safety here. My first concern when I looked at it was that we've got two posts quite close to each other. So if I look at the post property here, having selected that, you can see that this is a PS post. It is a, a 60 mil diameter with 3.2 mil. Second those numbers are probably quite small on your system there, but uh, um, you probably can see that the tooltip there is quite long. It's, it's 60.3 times 3.2 and then in 
PDF, uh, the 182 classroom EN 12767. Lots of words on that tool tip there that tells me the post is passively safe, but in terms of the summary, the structure overall, there is a, an issue with the mounting height of signs. The safety um, considerations is that we don't have signs that enter the passenger cell. Um, now, it's probably okay with that one. Normally, if you've got a big rectangle mounted across two posts, then the rectangular sign could end up knocking the driver out of entering the passenger cell below the 1.8 height. So the, the structure like that wouldn't always be considered to be absolutely safe. Now, just to finish the, uh, um, the, the uh, process here, I'm going to just pop into key lines. I've got the drawing open in the uh, site here. I'll just very quickly do is go back to the, uh, the key accident side here um, and uh, just do a very quick search and plot of the records. One of the strengths of the AutoCAD accident is not just making AutoCAD a bit of a GIS thing, so we can do that geographical analysis, but also um, very strong on the presentation side. So I'm just going to draw a, a larger circle here and do a very quick search. Um, we'll just do a query there see how many accidents we've got at that location. Um, so very strong on the presentation side. I've got 20 here, so I might want to restrict the numbers there. But very quickly plot those locations. Probably going to go with balloons, have them drawn against the context of the map in model space, and I will select those. So we've got some indication. The background. We're OK, so we don't create, don't create marks there. <coughs> Just a warning there to make sure that all the colors match up and I can see all of the various bits of information that are presented on the balloon diagrams. So I'll accept that size, that's about right. And then I'm just going to pop the balloons very, very quickly down here. Um, and once I've done that process, we'll just go around and work very much crossing the lines here. And normally I would want to make sure that they don't cross the lines and I've got a bit more time to Make the numbers go in the right sort of order. Here's one there. And what you can very clearly see, I think, is that there is a lot of loss of control. That's where you get the, the wiggle, um, the wiggly arrow there. We've got turning movements where there's lots of controls of recorded. Um, and again, wiggly arrows, someone just going straight from north to south. So lots and lots of information available on the balloon diagrams. In fact, we have snow on a um, no surface there. Again, loss of control, probably just because of the maybe a single vehicle accident. You can see accident number 16 there um, because of the surface that's been recorded and so on. Get the good there that uh, are involved predominantly with the uh, accidents at this particular location. So what might we do? Well, we really do need to speed uh, to, to speed. I'll just go quickly back to the imagery. Here, um, so you can see now I've got the uh, the AutoCAD um, side of things open with uh, some of the key lines objects drawn. We've got a mosque area of hatching on the approach to that island. Um, just have a little look at the next image here, where we've got the hatching coming round uh, on the uh, side on the right here, uh, and the giveaway triangles and so on. So going back just to key lines here quickly. What we might decide to do, and I've started this work already, putting the narrowing on this site here. So very, very quickly I can do that. Go into the, um, the hatching commands, and uh, this presents to me a lot of images, which uh, enables me to choose the right kind of hatching quickly. But you can see just on the map behind this uh, thumbnail dialog that's come up where you've got the um, the arrow to bring the vehicles in. I've already put those in. So it's just a little introduction. I quickly just pop that in. Maybe want to start people thinking about pulling over to the outside so they've got a better view of the junction, maybe roundabout down here. I might want to go all the way to the pit here. And I might want to just adjust that later on, depending on what I get. And then maybe on the near side here, I'll just put a few um, points just to quickly put that in. Uh, obviously, the result. So we'll just pop that round here, and we'll have the system automatically calculate the angle for the hatch pattern based on the boundaries that I've drawn. 
So very, very quick game, more uh, uh, slow, to really enforce the fact that people have to be slowing down. Some kind of design like that, very, very straightforward to get done very quickly within key lines. So that was end to end. I hope that was of interest. It's a real site. You can go there and see it within Google Street View or actually go and drive to Junction 13 on the M40. And uh, if you saw the site there, I um, understand that they're modeling the junction down, junction 12. Um, but uh, of course, um, it may be a capacity issue here as there is a junction 12 with the new Land Rover factory being opened up there. And perhaps a measure like this wouldn't be appropriate because obviously this kind of measure really significantly can reduce the capacity of queuing at the junction and you get the um, rather informal approach uh, drivers being had on the hard shoulder.